Tarai region of the country celebrated Holi today, the festival of colors and happiness. The festival, which was observed with much fanfare and enthusiasm across the Hilly region, including the Kathmandu Valley yesterday, has been celebrated in the southern part of the country today. Good evening, I am Praram Badhal. Let's begin with the main stories. Two writs filed against Prime Minister and CPNI Centre Chairperson Pushra Kamal Dhal at the Supreme Court demand arrest and legal actions. Maoist leaders urge the government to conclude the remaining works of the peace process, warn of countering activities against the peace accord and transformation. Rescuers search for signs of life after a landslide kills 15 people on a remote Indonesian island, await equipment and reinforcements to boost efforts to find 42 missing. And Papua New Guinea and the United Arab Emirates arrive in Nepal for the ICC World Cricket League 2 Series, aim to secure a place in the World Cup Global Qualifiers. Two writs have been filed at the Supreme Court against Prime Minister and CPN Maoist Centre Chairperson Pushpa Kamal Dahal. Advocates Ganinder Rajaran and Kalyan Budathoki have filed the writs against Prime Minister Dahal, Office of the Council of Ministers, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of Law, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and the Police Headquarters. The joint bench of Justices Ishwar Khatiwada and Hari Prasad Fuyal had directed for filing a writ against the Prime Minister. The writ has been filed against the Hal's statement where he had said that he would shoulder the responsibility of the 5,000 among the 17,000 killed during the armed conflict. The writ has demanded the arrest of Mao Center Chair Dahal, investigations and actions against him. Maoist leaders have demanded the government to conclude the remaining works of the peace process. A meeting of the Maoist leaders held at the official residence of the Prime Minister in Balotar have agreed to counter efforts against the peace process and transformation. With the issue of transitional justice growing complicated, Maoist leaders have stressed on management of the comprehensive peace accord. The meeting also expressed the commitment of implementation of the agreement reached with the state. Leaders of the erstwhile CPN Maoist Center came together following the situation of a case against Prime Minister Pusha Kamal Dahal. The leaders have been holding discussions to move forward with a functional unity among the parties even if they fail to merge. Election for the new president is slated for Thursday. The ruling coalition has fielded Ram Chandra Paudel of Nepali Congress, while CPN UML has put forward Subhas Chandra Nembang. Period for election campaigning ended last night. Candidates can no longer ask for votes or influence the voters. They are also prohibited from holding assemblies or any activity related to election. Meanwhile, election officers have also been deployed at the voting center. Seven officials each have been arranged for the voting of the federal parliament and the provincial assemblies. The election is slated for March 9 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. A speaker of the House of Representatives, Devraj Kimire, has said that there were practical complications in appointment of women in leadership positions. Addressing a program organized to mark the 113th International Women's Day, Speaker Ghimre said that despite complications, participation of women in leadership roles was increasingly getting insured. He said that a large number of women had reached the platform for making laws because of the constitutional provision of 33-person representation, but added that women were yet to hold main leadership positions. An international photo and video exhibition on climate change and environment has begun in Kathmandu. Photos and videos reflecting the impact of climate change on environment from around the world are at display in the exhibition titled Photo KTM organized by Photo Circle. Photos and videos from around 12 countries are at display in the exhibition. The exhibition being held in 12 different places in the valley will conclude on the 31st of March. Devotees have been prohibited from taking pigeons to the Manakamana temple in Gorkha. Considering the death of pigeons because of adverse weather, possible diseases and sanitation around the temple, devotees have been prohibited from taking pigeons to the temple. Shahid Lakhan Rural Municipality, Manakamana Area Development Committee and the FNCCI Manakamana issued a public notice in this regard. 
The local residents who fish to make a living near the banks of Tamor in Tiratum, Pasthar and Thankuta are facing problems following the reduction in number of fish in the river. The community of fishermen in the banks of the Tamor River in Marstar, Nakalekhat, Pinasi, Lumuhat and Simraghat, among other places, have begun facing problems with the reduction in the number of fish. Different kinds of fish are no longer found in the river. Young members of the community have begun seeking alternatives for employment as a consequence. The first Jwala Mukhi Religious and Tourism Festival has been organized in Thadin. The festival was organized with the objective of promoting the temple and local products. Local art, craft and products have been displayed and were also put for sales at the festival which concludes today. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. The question is, what should be done to prevent the shortages of chemical fertilizers? Your options are A. Promote organic fertilizers, B. Establish domestic factories, and C. Facilitate procurement process. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. It is now time for the international news. Rescuers on a remote Indonesia island searched for lies, uh, signs of life, in fact, on Tuesday after a landslide that killed 15 people awaiting equipment and reinforcements to boost efforts to find 42 people still missing, the disaster agency has said. The landslide on Monday followed six days of torrential rain and buried houses on a village on the island of Serasan in the Natuna region, about 80 kilometers off the island of Borneo. Disaster Agency spokesperson Abdul Muari said the landslide was estimated to have been 100 to 200 meters long and there were just 42 people involved in a rescue mission complicated by the remote location. Heavy equipment such as ex excavators had yet to arrive with those helping in the operation required to travel by boat, vehicles then on foot. The number of fatal fatalities might change at any time. Of the 15 fatalities, 10 bodies have been retrieved. In addition to that, 1,216 residents had been moved to temporary shelters in mosques and community health centers. A video showed rescuers in helmets working with flashlights in darkness to try to free the victims, with houses destroyed and roads blanketed in mud. Two helicopters would be sent from the capital Jakarta to help the rescue effort, as well as a plane carrying tents, food and blankets for the evacuees. The Natuna's rescue agency had said the military would be deployed to help the rescue and some equipment had been dispatched, including extraction tools and lighting equipment. The Kremlin has said it had not yet seen any cases of price caps on Russian oil imposed by the West last month in comments about possible losses from such measures. Some analysts have previously said that the caps will be little immediate impact on the oil revenues that Moscow is currently earning. As of now, Russian flagship Ural's crude blend is traded below the price cap level of $60 per barrel imposed by the West as part of the sanctions against Moscow over its military actions in Ukraine. The price cap allows non-EU countries to continue importing seaborne Russian crude oil but private shipping, insurance and reinsurance companies from handling cargoes of Russian crude around the globe unless it is sold for less than $60. Russian President Vladimir Putin last month signed a decree that banned the supply of crude oil and oil products from February 1 for five months to nations that abide by the cap. Russian oil traditionally sells at a discount to international benchmarks such as Brent. The discount was, has widened following the Western sanctions imposed over the conflict in Ukraine and now stands at some $25 to $30 per barrel to dated Brent. Now, Peskov also said that Russia would do everything to protect itself by plans, uh, from plans by the group of seven G7 uh, leading economies to impose two sets of price caps on Russian oil products. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, said that Ukraine's top military commanders pledged to keep defending Bakhmut when asked how to deal further with the situation of the besieged city. Zelensky said that at a meeting of top military officials, he had asked the commander of the regional grouping and Ukraine's commander-in-chief how they proposed to proceed. During his address, Zelensky also referred to a 12-second video widely shared on Twitter that showed an apparently unarmed man in uniform with a Ukrainian flag insignia on his arm standing smoking in a wooded area. The man says glory to Ukraine. Multiple shots are heard coming from an unseen shooter or shooters and the man slumps to the ground as bullets appear to hit his body. 
Reuters was not immediately able to verify the authenticity, date or location of the video, which is of poor quality. Now, Russia's defense ministry did not immediately respond to a query about the video as well. Ukrainian authorities did not say where or when the shooting occurred. Now, Ukraine's top prosecutor said on Monday that a criminal investigation had been launched into what he called the brutal and brazen shooting of an unarmed person depicted in the video. Now, Israeli settlers attacked Palestinians in the West Bank village of Huwara overnight on Monday, the scene of a violent rampage last week by dozens of settlers seeking revenge for the shooting of two Israeli brothers. CCTV footage showed Israeli settlers attacking Palestinian family in a car outside supermarket. Huwara, a Palestinian village near a major road checkpoint, has become the latest flashpoint between Israelis and Palestinians after months of worsening violence in the occupied West Bank. Israeli army and border police forces dispersed crowds of what the military described as a number of violent riots in Huwara, and videos shared on social media showed a group of black-clad youths attacking a Palestinian car before its driver manages to pull away. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken overnight reiterated calls for both sides to de-escalate tensions in the West Bank, where Israeli forces have more than, have in fact, killed more than 65 Palestinians, including militant fighters and civilians this year. In the same period, Palestinians have killed 13 Israelis and one Ukrainian woman in a series of apparently uncoordinated attacks by individuals. Most trains came to a halt. Oil refineries were blocked and power production reduced in France on Tuesday as unions organized a sixth day of nationwide strikes against President Emmanuel Macron's pension reform plans. Opinion polls have for weeks shown that a majority of voters reject the reform which would raise the pension age by two years to 64, among the other measures. But the government intends to stand its ground and carry out the plans it says are essential to ensure the pension system does not go bust. Commuters at Saint-Lazare station in Paris encounter sev severe disruptions to metro and suburban rail traffic, but most supported the movement against pension reforms. Transport Minister Clement Boone said Tuesday's strike would be one of the most difficult ones for travelers. Unions said they would increase pressure to try and convince lawmakers not to vote for the reforms, adding that rolling strikes, particularly at oil refineries and on the railways, could be prolonged for several days. Rallies are planned across France after more than 1.27 million people took part in the previous protests on January 31. While Macron's camp does not have an absolute majority in parliament, it can count on the support of at least part of the conservative less Republican its party. Still, it is unclear whether the changes will be approved by Parliament by the end of the month or if the government will have to ram them through using special constitutional powers. Welcome back. It is now time for the sports news. Sports news. Papua New Guinea and the United Arab Emirates have arrived in Nepal for the last series under the ICC World Cricket League 2 tournament. Papua New Guinea arrived in Nepal yesterday following conclusion of the UAE series. Meanwhile, the UAE, who did not do well in their home series, arrived today. Despite wins in the remaining matches, the United Arab Emirates have lost the opportunity of securing a direct spot in the World Cup global qualifiers. The UAE have 31 points from 32 matches and are placed sixth in the league table, while Nepal have 32 points from 32 matches and wins in all remaining matches will secure their place in the World Cup qualifiers. That is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin is at 10.30 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.